Hello and welcome to a new video on the subject of microscopy. I'll be covering in detail in a separate video the working principle, details of the component parts and other important aspects of a compound bright field light microscope. But for now, I thought I should make a short and practical oriented last minute checklist kind of video on how to quickly set up a compound binocular bright field light microscope for specimen examination and study. You can also check out my video on how to use a compound monocular light microscope by clicking on the link given in the top right corner of the screen or the link in the description below. So here we go. The binocular light microscope is a more advanced and sophisticated design of the bright field light microscope. It gets its name from the fact that it is equipped with two eyepieces, both of which are simultaneously used to give the user a stereoscopic viewing experience of the specimen image. The usage of the binocular light microscope is overall the same as that of a monocular light microscope, albeit with a handful of differences. To begin with, here's a quick pictorial overview of the different component parts of a typical compound binocular bright field light microscope that you'd normally come across in a biology lab. Once you remove the microscope from its box, bring it to the working table by holding it with both hands, one hand firmly holding the arm of the microscope and the other hand supporting the base of the microscope like so. Safely position the microscope on the table such that the base of the microscope is at least 3 inches away from the edge of the working table. The microscope may be placed in either this position with the arm towards the user or this position with the arm away from the user. Accordingly, you can position the eyepieces in the direction of the user by loosening the eyepiece turret screw and rotating the eyepiece turret. Modern binocular microscopes usually come with inbuilt light sources such as halogen lamp or more modern LED lamps. So the placement location of the microscope doesn't matter. However, if mirror reflected natural daylight is to be used for specimen viewing, the microscope should be placed in a location that has sufficient access to bright or diffuse light but not direct sunlight. Somewhere close to a window is preferable in most instances. Once the microscope is correctly positioned, the first thing you need to do is to check both the eyepieces. For this, remove them from their positions and check both the upper and lower lenses for dust and dirt. If present, use a lens cloth or lens paper to wipe them clean. Reinsert the eyepieces once cleaned. Next, clean the external or front lenses of the objectives as well with lens paper or lens cloth. Position a low power objective lens, either the 4x or the 10x lens, in line with the hole in the center of the stage. To do this, rotate the nose piece until one of the low power objective lenses clicks into position and aligns itself with the body tube and the hole in the center of the stage. Using the coarse adjustment knob, lower the stage down and away from the objective lens. Wipe the stage with a clean piece of cloth or lint-free tissue to remove dust and debris. Next, check the iris diaphragm of the condenser. Make sure it's at least partially open. If fully closed, adjust the aperture using the diaphragm adjuster that sticks out from the condenser body. Also make sure the condenser lenses and the light source lens are free from dust and dirt. Now turn on the illumination and set the brightness intensity to a lower level to begin with. Look through one or both the eyepieces and make sure the circular field of view is uniformly illuminated. Adjust the aperture of the iris diaphragm if not uniform. Then, adjust the distance between the eyepieces relative to the distance between your two eyes. To do this, while keeping your eyes positioned and keeping them both opened, slowly diverge and or converge the eyepieces until that point where the circular fields of view seen individually by both eyes converge to form a singular circular field of view. It takes some time and practice to get used to viewing through a binocular microscope with both eyes open, especially those who have only had experiences using the monocular type of microscopes, but one gets the hang of it eventually. In fact, stereoscopic field of view is one of the best views you will experience in microscopy. The binocular microscope is now more or less ready to be used. For specimen viewing, first lower the stage and away from the objective lens by turning the coarse adjustment knob. 
It's worth noting here that in the traditional monocular microscope, turning the coarse adjustment screw raises the body tube and the objective lenses up and away from the stage. In a binocular microscope, the body tube and the objective lenses are stationary. Turning the coarse adjustment screw only lowers the stage away from the objective lenses. The end result is basically the same. Now, place the prepared slide containing the specimen of interest onto the stage. Binocular microscopes are mostly designed with a mechanical stage setup. In order to secure the slide in position, pull the spring-loaded slide clip away from the center, like so, and then place the slide securely in the slide compartment. Bring the slide clip back in position, which now firmly holds the slide. Next, center the specimen by adjusting the slide sideways and up and down using the sliding screws until the specimen is located roughly in the center of the hole in the stage. Once you have centered the specimen, slowly and carefully lift the stage using the coarse adjustment knob until the surface of the slide or the cover glass almost touches the front lens of the objective in use. Now, look through the oculars again to check for brightness and uniformity of light in the circular field of view a second time. Adjust the iris diaphragm and or the light intensity accordingly. Now, before actually beginning to examine the specimen, you'll need to make sure that the focus of both eyepieces are aligned with respect to the powers of both the viewer's eyes. The ocular tube of one of the eyepieces in a binocular microscope, usually the right eyepiece, can be rotated to adjust its focus. To focus align both eyepieces, first cover the right eye and look into the left eyepiece with the left eye. Then carefully rotate the coarse adjustment knob clockwise until the specimen becomes visible and is more or less in focus. Once the specimen comes into view, use only the fine adjustment knob to bring the specimen into sharp focus by rotating the fine adjustment knob clockwise or counterclockwise. Once you have the specimen in focus through the left eyepiece, cover the left eye and then look through the right eyepiece using the right eye without touching the coarse or fine adjustment knobs that had already been set for the left eye adjust the focus of the right eye by rotating the eyepiece tube clockwise and or counterclockwise until the specimen comes into clear focus now open both eyes and look through the binocular eyepieces one more time if you see that the object in the view is evenly focused without causing any unequal focusing strain in either of the two eyes then the eyepieces can be said to have been focus aligned a point to be noted here is that in the traditional monocular light microscope, the coarse and fine adjustment screws are separately placed next to each other. In modern binocular microscopes, however, the fine adjustment knob protrudes as a smaller screw from the center of the coarse adjustment knob, both of which forms part of a larger screw mechanism. Modern binocular microscopes usually come fitted with a blue filter underneath the iris diaphragm. The main advantage of a blue filter is that irrespective of the color of the light source, the blue filter will render it colorless and give a clear white background in the field of view. This is both soothing to the eyes and also doesn't mask the true color of the specimen. Once the eyepieces have been focus aligned and the specimen comes into clear focus, you can adjust the aperture of the iris diaphragm until the image contrast is sufficiently enhanced. Contrast is inversely proportional to the amount of light passing through the condenser and thereby through the specimen. So the narrower the aperture, the higher the contrast, while the more the opening of the condenser, the lesser the contrast but brighter and more cloudy will be the image. The height of the condenser in most binocular microscope models can also be adjusted. The closer the condenser is to the stage, the more critically focused the light is on the specimen, and the farther away the condenser is positioned from the stage, the more diffuse the light becomes, and therefore the more darker the image is. You can always spend some time experimenting with the diaphragm aperture, the condenser height, and the brightness of the light source in order to eventually obtain a crisp and clear image with optimal lighting. Once you're done bringing the specimen image into focus under the low power objective, scan the specimen for the specific region of interest that you would like to observe and study further by again adjusting the slide carefully and slowly sideways or up and down using the sliding screws. Once you have locked onto the region of interest, change the objective lens to the high power, which is usually 40 or 45x by rotating the nose piece until the high power objective lens clicks into position aligning with the body tube and the hole in the center of the stage. 
use only the fine adjustment knob to bring the image into clear focus, as the focusing distance for high power objective lenses is barely within a millimeter region, using the coarse adjustment knob with high power objective lenses can result in accidental overshooting of the lens by ramming it against the slide surface, resulting in breakage of the lens and or the slide. To prevent this mishap, many modern high power objectives are manufactured with a spring mechanism fitted for the front lens. These spring-loaded objective lenses help prevent accidental breakage by retracting the front lens to a certain degree into the body of the objective when the user happens to overshoot the lens against the glass light. Having said that, it is still always better to be careful and follow good practice when using high power objectives by using only the fine adjustment focus knob with such objectives. Once the specimen is focused under high power, you might need to readjust the lighting, the aperture, and the condenser height in order to attain the ideal brightness and contrast. More advanced Brightfield microscope models come with a power focal design feature, whereby the image once focused under the low power will remain in focus under high power lenses as well, without the need for refocusing. Now coming to the usage of the highest power objective in a Brightfield microscope, also known as a 100x immersion lens. There are certain fields in biology where minute details or extremely tiny objects such as bacteria need to be examined. This is where the immersion lens comes as a great add-on advantage in microscopy. The most commonly known and widely used high power immersion lens is the 100x oil immersion lens. One of the only drawbacks of immersion lens is that only dead specimens that have been permanently fixed on the slide can be observed with good clarity. In order to use the oil immersion objective lens, first lower the state using the coarse adjustment knob, then rotate the nose piece until the 100x immersion lens aligns with the body tube and clicks into position. Place the permanent specimen slide onto the state and center the specimen. Now place a drop of high refractive index immersion oil recommended by the manufacturer of the microscope to be used with their immersion lens. Then carefully bring up the stage until the front lens of the immersion objective touches the oil surface on the slide. Now view through the eyepieces and focus the specimen using only the fine adjustment knob. Again, you might need to readjust the lighting for maximum contrast and ideal brightness. Once you're done examining the slide, lower the stage and wipe the residual oil off of the objective lens using a clean and dry piece of lens cloth or lens paper. Remove the slide from the stage and wipe the oil off from the slide using a cotton ball dipped in acetone. Do not use harsh chemicals such as organic solvents for cleaning microscope lenses. You may however use ethanol or isopropyl alcohol of 70 to 90% concentration for cleaning. Once you're finished using the microscope, clean the lenses, the stage and the body with lens cloth. Keep the nose piece in neutral position that is, without clicking any objective in position in alignment with the body tube. Finally, either cover it with the microscope cover or put it back into its designated box. So this was all about the use of a compound binocular bright field microscope. If you found this video helpful, do show your support for what I am doing by considering subscribing to my channel and turning on notifications to stay tuned for more such content. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.